On September 11, 2001, I was running floor trading operations for Goldman Sachs at Ground Zero in New York City. As I watched the first responders running into the carnage of that day, I resolved to do something to give back to those who serve. April 27, 2011 was my daughter's fifth birthday. We celebrated like many families with cake and ice cream but without a care in the world. 6,800 miles away, Army Sergeant Dan Rose was being medevaced from the battlefield to Kandahar. The vehicle he was, it, was in hit an IED, and his injuries would rob him the ability to walk again. Dan's experience that day was a personal reminder of how much we owe our veterans and how their sacrifices allow all of us to take for granted the lives we are blessed to live here. I will never forget the day that Sergeant Dan Rose came to our studio to demonstrate how his soldier suit allowed him to get up from his wheelchair and take the steps that he never dreamed he would be able to take again. As Americans, we must make sure that we give back, but give back in a way that is uniquely American, that relies on this cutting edge technology and never take no for an answer. So that was part of um, an interesting experience uh, that we had on Capitol Hill this week, exploring new ways to empower the lives of our veterans through cutting-edge technology. And I had the privilege of speaking on behalf of Soldier Strong, an organization that I have been on the advisory board of since 2014, and it aims to help injured heroes get back on their feet using this amazing new developments in rehabilitation technology. And joining me is Chris Meek. He is the chairman and the co-founder of Soldier Strong. He founded it. He works on it every single day. And he is a hero to me um, and to many who are helped by his work. Chris, great to see you. Great to see you. Thanks uh, for having this me. This evening. Thanks for being here. You. you know, we were there to talk to the House Science and Technology Committee about this cutting edge technology and how it can be integrated into what our, uh, into how we continue to serve our veterans. And you feel that the way that we work on, on technology for the battlefield has to be extended across that bridge to after they come home. Yeah, absolutely. And a lot of the devices that we fund uh, were originally funded through DARPA, which is a part of the Department of Defense. Yeah. And as you mentioned, we give our warfighters the absolute best technology we can on the battlefield. But once they come home uh, and they face the VA system, there's really no DARPA for veterans back here. And so we're trying to fill that, what I call the Death Valley Gap, uh, of what they have in the battlefield versus the care they receive back here at home. Yeah, and there are um, American companies that are making, you know, I, as I said during the hearing, it's like, you know, Iron Man isn't just in the movies. Right. I mean, they're creating arms that are fully usable from the elbow to the wrist all the way down to the fingers. Tell people a little bit about what, what can be done now that is so new and incredible. Well, now it's even going a step further. So the one device you mentioned actually is the only full range that includes the shoulder. Uh, but now they're hardwiring them into your brains, so you actually just think about it and it moves. Um, other things like virtual reality. There's one veteran we worked with at Vanderbilt University where uh, he lost his arm in Vietnam. And through technology, um, he put on, through virtual reality, actually turned a doorknob. And he started to cry because it was the first time he had actually felt a doorknob in 25 years. And so, to your point, science fiction is becoming science fact. Yeah. Let's just watch a moment with Dan Rose when he was in our studio a while back. Standing up was surreal. Like. Yeah. You know, the act of like actually, you know, pushing up, standing up and being eye level with people again was just an amazing experience. You know, the other side of this is government spending and how it's used, right? Um, this technology is so psychologically beneficial, as Dan says, and it can turn people's lives around. You talk about the fact that 20 members, 20 veterans commit suicide every single day. This technology helps to improve their lives and we hope to prevent some of those lives from being lost in that horrific way. Yeah, absolutely. And it's one thing to think about being able to stand and be eye level with the world again. It's something that you and I would take for granted. But going that step further, um, we're actually working with some VA medical centers on a mental health study showing those benefits. Um, obviously, the me medical benefits are there, things like reducing uh, urinary tract infection, increasing muscle and bone density. But it's the things that, that you don't think about, um, the unseen wounds of war that they talk about. We're going to see Soldier Strong this weekend at the Indy 500, right? We are. We are. Uh, very fortunate to work with United Rentals, one of our major sponsors. Uh, and they are a sponsor of IndyCar team Ray Hall, Letterman, Lanigan. And they launched a program called Turns for Troops. The website's turnsfortroops.com. And what they do is for every lap that driver Graham Ray Hall completes throughout the entire IndyCar season, United Rentals donates $50 to our program. Uh, thanks to them and to him. Uh, it's an extraordinary event. You're going to be there this weekend, so have fun. Thank you. Uh, send us some pictures. Well and in the meantime, we've been putting on the bottom, Turns for Troops and SoldierStrong.org. Um, please make it part of your Memorial Day to log on and to, to check this out. We hope you'll help.